Okay, the last thing that remains for us to do is to learn how to take a given key and find all of the possible uh, mediant chords or keys related to it and to define their relationships. So we'll take the key of B flat since that's the one we've been working in and if we go up a minor third we can have a key um, that would be immediate away. So we go up a minor third and we would be in the key of D flat major which has an enharmonic equivalent of C sharp major and we could also go up a minor third and use instead of a major quality we could find a minor quality chord or key there is no D flat minor but there is a C sharp minor so that would be a possible key and we could also now we've gone up a minor third now we can go up a major third and we have a key of D major and we have a key of D minor and there are no enharmonic equivalents for those if we were to move down a minor third we would have the key of G major or G minor there are no enharmonic equivalents for those if we move down a major third we have a key of G flat but we also have an enharmonic equivalent of F sharp and if we go down a major third and we use a minor quality we have F sharp minor and there is no enharmonic equivalent now although this uh, is not a true third it is in the aural sense so remember that enharmonic equivalents play a big role in the late romantic period so these are all of the possible uh, mediant relations to B flat so you go up major third um, or up a minor third down a major third down a minor third and you find the major and minor um, possible keys or chords that are in re relationship to your home key. Now let's define these exact relationships first. Let's take a look at how many notes they have in common with the home chord. B flat D F has certain notes in common with these other related chords or keys. So if you take B flat D F and you take D flat F A flat, how many common tones are there between those? Well, F would be a common tone, so we have one common tone. C sharp, E, G sharp, and B flat D F have zero common tones. D, F sharp, A, and B flat, D, F have one common tone, which is D. D, F, A has two common tones, the D and the F. So on the other side, you take B flat, D, F, and you take G, B, D, you have one common tone, the D. Now you take G, B flat, D, and you have two common tones, the B flat and the D. If you keep going here, you have G flat, B flat, D flat. You have one common tone, which is B flat. And lastly, we have F sharp, A, C sharp, um, and you could think of it as G flat, uh, B double flat, D flat. However, the way you want to think about it, there are no common tones between those two. So we can see that on either side, 
there is one key or chord that has no common tones with the home key or chord. There are two that have one common tone with the home key or chord, and there is one on each side that has two common tones. So let's identify these key or chord relationships. First of all, the keys or chords that have two common tones, these are called diatonic medians. Diatonic medians. Now, what that means is that G minor and D minor are actually chords that stand in very close relationship to B flat. As a matter of fact, in the key of B flat, this is the three chord and this is the six chord. So these chords are diatonic to the home base key. These are the diatonic medium keys. Any other key that's left over is said to be a chromatic mediant. But of these chromatic mediants, one of these on each side has a special subdivision name, which we call a doubly chromatic mediant. And that is the one with zero common tones. So this is called a doubly chromatic CHR median. Like this stylus doesn't write very neatly, but this is a doubly chromatic median because it has zero common tones. Over here, the F sharp minor is a doubly chromatic median. The other ones that are left over are called simply chromatic medians. And in a general sense, even the doubly chromatics will be referred to in many theory books as simply chromatic medians. I distinguish between the zero common tones and the one common tones because they are less used and strikingly different sounding. So these that have zero common tones that are thirds away we will call doubly chromatic medians, whereas all of the rest are simply called chromatic medians. So the chromatic medians here would be B flat or C sharp would be chromatic median to B flat. Uh, the key of D would be chromatic median. G of G would be a chromatic median. G of G flat would be a chromatic median. G minor, D minor are diatonic medians. C sharp minor and F sharp minor are doubly chromatic medians. Let me also point out here that the doubly chromatic medians are always going to be the opposite quality of the given chord or key. So if this one, the given key is major, the doubly chromatic median will be a minor chord or key. And it will also have zero common tones, but it will always be opposite quality. So the doubly chromatic median is C sharp minor, which is opposite quality to B flat. And the doubly chromatic median below is F sharp minor, which is opposite quality to B flat. In the Hugo Wolf piece that we looked at um, earlier, he cycled through B flat to D to G flat and back home to B flat, not only using the equal division of the octave, but using two of his possible chromatic medians to get there. Lastly, let's just do one more key to practice finding all the possible median key or chord relations. But this time let's do a minor 
since we were doing major before. So we begin with F sharp minor. I want to go up a minor third and find the major or minor keys that exist there. So I'll start with up a minor third and I'll use uh, a major and then I'll find a minor and then I'll go up a major third and there is no key of A sharp major but there is an enharmonic to it which is B flat and the major third up minor key is B flat minor which also has an A sharp equivalent actually the minor third is A sharp and B flat minor would be the equivalent and if I go the other direction below, if I go a minor third below, I have D sharp major, but there is no D sharp major key in the circle of fifths, but there is an E flat, which is an harmonically equivalent. So a major third down, uh, I'm sorry, a minor third down would be E flat, and the minor version of that would be D sharp with an E flat equivalent. If I go a major third down, I have D major as a median key, and I have D minor as a median key, and these have no inharmonic equivalents. So now let me decide who, is, who are my diatonic medians, who are my chromatic medians, and who are my doubly chromatic medians. First, let me think about the common tones. The key of uh, A, um, or the chord A, A, C-sharp, E, is related to F-sharp, A, C-sharp, in the sense that it has two common tones. A, C, E has one common tone. B flat, D, F has zero common tones. A sharp, uh, minor, A sharp, C sharp, E sharp has one common tone. E flat, G, B flat has zero common tones. D sharp, F sharp, A sharp, has one common tone. D F sharp A has two common tones. D F A has one common tone. So this key of A is related to F sharp as a diatonic mediant. And staying on this side, my A minor key is a chromatic mediant. B flat is related to F sharp minor as a doubly chromatic. Again, I apologize for the stylus I'm not writing clearly all the time. And then the key of B flat minor or A sharp minor stands in relationship to F sharp minor as a chromatic median. On the other side, the key of E flat major is a doubly chromatic median. The keys of D sharp minor or E flat minor are chromatic medians. 
the key of D major is the diatonic median, and the key of D minor is a chromatic median, because in the key of F sharp minor, um, A is the three chord, that's a diatonic median, and in the key of F sharp minor, D is the six chord, and that is also a diatonic median. The others are either chromatic or doubly chromatic. Okay, hopefully this video helps you understand chromatic median relationships and how they began to be woven into the harmonic fabric of the late 19th century, especially because these composers began to prioritize voice leading considerations over the functional harmony of the past, where the chords would move in fourths and fifths. Now they're moving in thirds with these quick modulations to remote keys because the voice leading becomes prioritized over the functional harmony, which used to be the priority. And we're borrowing these uh, voice leading paradigms from the past and putting them into new harmonic contexts. Um, so these composers began to use them for these reasons, but they also began to use them, and let's not forget, because they sound cool. Yeah.